Okay, continuing on step 14, we're going to install the peg head tuners. I know we've talked a lot about these, but I think it's good to take a time to educate people once again about how they work. They look like violin pegs, but they, um, they actually have a gear inside of them so that they're much uh, more accurate. The way it works is this part is a housing that gets um, uh, fixed into the headstock, and then back here the knob turns a shaft inside that hits a gear and turns this, knob, this thing on the top. The way that they, they are adjustable for tension, uh, harder to turn or easier to turn, by pressing this knob in or out of the housing. Some people don't know that and they get very frustrated with their peg heads. So before I even get started, I often will kind of push them in and out a little bit just to make sure it's working. Um, these pliers, by the way, have a like a Derlin jaw so that they don't scratch the surface. That's the right word, isn't it? Delrin. Delrin. I need the engineer's help there. Okay. Great. So they're ready. They come uh, threaded two different directions. Um, so there's like right hand and left hand peg heads. We'll talk about that in a second. First though, um, I'm going to just check the back of the headstock, see how the holes look, see how much reaming I'm going to have to do. These are like our end pin. These are um, conical in shape. So uh, you need one of these to make it work. So to start with, I'm just going to put one in and uh, see how far it gets by hand. So it's kind of getting too hard to put to go any farther right now, so I'm going to back it out. I'm going to ream a small amount from that hole. This is danger zone time. You could tear out the back of this really easily, even with this really fancy, sharp, expensive reamer. And it's a shame to do this at the very last day of a uke. Try it again. Oh, this is going to be better. See, now by hand, I can get it until the threads pretty much disappear. That's what I want. Now, by backing it out, what I'm doing is um, tapping. That's the right word, isn't it? I'm tapping that hole so that it's threaded inside. And if you could see up close to the camera, there's now little threads in there, like a nut and a bolt. So now I'll take a little bit of uh, medium super glue. One little drop. Spread it with my finger. I don't want too much in any one place because it'll um, squeeze out the back of the headstock. And now I'll go back in, turn it by hand. On Port Orford Cedar, um, this is a little easier to do than on like the banjo ukes, which is like maple or walnut, or even on the mahogany neck instruments. So I often use these pliers with the fancy jaws in order to get the last turn or two. There you go. Oh, you have to be careful not to scratch the back of the headstock with the pliers. Great. Now, second one. This one might not need any reaming. Each peg head's a little bit different, and each hole is going to be a little different, so each one has to get fit. Almost there. I'm going to use my pliers for the last turn. I really like to do that because it feels like it's really in there securely. And what we're looking for is we want the, we don't want the threads to be sticking out a whole bunch out of the top, but we want um, all the tuners to be the same height. It just looks better. Okay, on to the next one. Now, um, the last two went in this way, like normal, you know, righty tidy, lefty loosey. And then once um, strings get on here, the string tension over time will kind of always ensure that they're seated in there. But if you did it the same way on this side, string tension over time may back them out and loosen them. So these have opposite threads. They're threaded lefty, tighty, righty, loosey, which is a really weird thing to say. Almost can't do it. So first I'll just check by turning it just by the knob until it stops and then see, perfect. So now I can back it out, put a little glue. I think I mentioned this on another video, but it, most people think of glue as um, something that sticks. And it does eventually, but before it sticks, it's a lubricant. Mm -hmm. And so um, 
Aaron's actually able to get that in there really smoothly. That little bit of glue helps, and then once he stops, it sets up. Yeah, it feels good. That one's in there good. Okay, last one. This one we had to fill a little bit around, so we may have to ream. Well, I think it's gonna work. So I'll back it out. Be really careful not to scratch the back of the headstock with this. And I even learned over time that if I'm going to do this, there's two sides to this. There's this is smooth here, this is rough. I, I have this facing the instrument. Even just little tricks like that help. Okay, so let me just check them now. They're all in the same distance, which I like. Um, and then as I look at the backs of them, I want to make, I'd like to see how they're angled back out to the instrument, see if they're all the same. And, uh, that is just kind of showing you how well you did your reaming. It's really easy with a reamer to ream crooked so that, yeah, the peg head's in here, but it might be in at an angle or this, or, you know, you want them nice and straight. So then I'll just double check that they're all working. And that's it for now. Peg heads.